Hey guys, how's it going? In our previous video, we learned how we can express a second order differential equation like this one as a system of first order linear differential equations. Now we'll be making use of that knowledge to solve such a second order differential equation using Scilab. So head over to your Scilab console and launch your Scilab editor, that is the Scilab notes. Now before we learn how we can solve an uh, second order differential equation using Scilab, let's go over our program that solved a first order linear differential equation that I used in one of my previous videos on differential equations. So to solve a first order differential equation using Scilab, we made use of a function called ODE, which, um, you know, took four arguments, that is, the first argument was for the initial value of y, then the second argument was for the initial value of x, and the third argument is the value of x or the values of x for which you want to find out the function, and then f is the function that you know returns the arches of the differential equation, as in if you have a differential equation like dy by dx equals 2x, then f must return the RHS of this equation that is 2x which you can see in this case uh, this function does we have an output variable dx and we have assigned the value twice of x to it so that whenever this function f is called it just returns twice of x now to solve a second order differential equation let's just use that example that we considered in our previous video in which we reduce this second order differential equation into a system of these two first order linear differential equation with their corresponding initial conditions. So let's just go ahead and start our program and let's say I make a function f and whose arguments are t and x. Now as you know that now my function f right here should return the arches of the differential equation as in the previous case but since this time I have two of these differential equations what I'm going to do is that I'm going to return the first differential equation or I'm going to store the first differential equation into the first component of the vector dx yes this time dx won't be just a simple output variable instead I'll make use of dx as a vector whose first component would store the first differential equation and the second component would store the second differential equation that is this one. Also this time my x right here would need to be a vector. So as we can see that the first differential equation corresponds to x2 what I'm going to write is that first differential equation returns the second component of the vector x and the second differential equation right here also would be written in terms of the components of vector x so let me just type in that pi by 2 star x of 2 now in case you didn't follow this step let me just you know repeat it for you like what we did was that we defined two new variables x1 and x2 now x1 stores or is equal to or corresponds to y of this equation and x2 corresponds to the y prime of this equation so these are the two new variables that I've created and I have you know allotted or let's just say I have created an, a vector x whose first component is this x1 and the second component is this x2 right here. So that's how I have got this function right here. I made two new variables x1 and x2 and then I reduce, um, I perform these operations right here. If you missed the previous video, you can just read what's given on this screen and that's how I arrived on these two linear differential equations and then I, all I need to do is I need to just enter those as I demonstrated right now dx is an 
is a vector and x is also a vector now the first component of dx stores the first differential equation and the second component of dx stores the second differential equation and then x is also a vector where x2 corresponds to y prime and x1 corresponds to y right here now if you are still a little bit confused about what's going on here i suggest that you pause the video and just have a look at this example right here and try to think over it or maybe if you are learning scilab in your school or college then you can ask for more help from your trainer or coach so let's just go on um, with this program so to call the ODE function just you know type in ODE now as you might remember to solve a single or, or the first order differential equation we need to enter these four arguments and we will have to enter the same four arguments for the second order also but the difference this time is that unlike the first order differential equation for which we had only a single initial value so but this time what we have is we have two initial values as you can see right here so you need to assign those initial values of y as a you know single column matrix or a vector so just type in those values or the initial values of the first and the second differential equation respectively that is the initial value of this differential equation is 6 so I enter that then the initial value of the second differential equation right here is minus 1 so I entered minus 1 as the second component of this vector then since both of these in initial values of x1 and x2 have been calculated at t equals 3 so I enter the initial value of t as 3 then you type in the value for which you want to find out the value of this function that is y because the whole you know point of solving a differential equation is to find out how y look how y looks like or what is the value of y at a given point so let's say I want to find out the value of y at 4 so I enter 4 and then the function so these are the four arguments that you need to pass in ODE then just you know you can display your solution on the scilab console and just run this program real quick so the answer is minus 2.119 and now as you can see you got two return values now why is that now since this different this ODE function solves differential equations and since we passed two differential equations this time so what we have got is we have got the solution of both the differential equations now the first now the solution of the first differential equation you know returns the value of y while the solution of the second differential equation returns the value of dy by dt you know the y prime so what it does is that this fun when we call the ODE function for two differential equations simultaneously it assigns the first column or the first row of solution as the with the value of y while the second row of solution is assigned with the value of dy by dt as you can verify by just going to a variable browser and opening solve so it is now storing these two values now if I just want to find out the value of y which is most of the people are concerned with you can just print that by giving solve one command and just run the program again so you will get only the value of y and not of dy by dt now I hope you all followed this video up till this point as I try to be as clear as possible though this is a little bit you know tricky to understand how second order differential equations are solved in scilab so it would require you to you know concentrate really and go over this program or 
you know the example that I used earlier to really understand what's going on right here is crucial for your understanding that you you know write this program by yourself and try to understand each and every step why was it done and and it and so on and also if you want to know how y looks like then what you can do is you can find out the value of y for a number of values and then just plot the graph for that so let's say I, want, um, I find out the value of y for from 4 to 10 and with the step interval of 0.1 so I can just write t here now so what it, it will do is this function will now solve the differential equation for the for values 4 to 10 with a step interval of 0.1 so I will have uh, the solution of y for these many values and then I can just plot the graph of that versus of my solution versus t now as I told you earlier only the first component of solution stores the value of y and so I'm only printing the first row of the solution matrix and then just you know save and execute your program so here's how your y looks like from 4 to 10 now let me just come over to this step right here if you didn't get why I did right um, um, I'm not sure if you followed what I did right here so I'm just going to explain this to you now since we have you know calculated the value of y this time for a variety of values what this function ODE does is it assigns the you know it finds out the value of y for 4 then 4.1 then 4.2 then 4.3 and so on up till 10 and it assigns all those values to the first row of the matrix that is soul so if you just open your soul matrix right here which was just you know these two values a moment ago when we only found out the value of y at 4 but since now we are finding out the value of y from 4 to 10 so what it does is cal it calculates the value of y as well as dy by dx dt in the second row and it just calculates all those values up till 10 so that's why what you uh, need to do is you need to give the com this command and what this command does is it tells the computer to plot a graph of the points that are stored in the first row of solution or sol matrix versus t points that is the uh, points stored in the variable or matrix t now i hope you followed at least some of the points that i explained in this video and i hope this video of, of was of some help to you and thanks for watching and i hope you have a nice day and if you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on physics as well as you know numerical computations using scilab or c plus plus and have a nice day everyone